Hello everyone, I am Mrs. Saili Belle. In this video, we are going to see IoT protocols. In the previous videos, we have seen what is IoT, what are the benefits of it, what are the technical building blocks of IoT. Now we will focus on IoT protocols. So here in this particular image, you will see the layer wise protocols has been used. So link layer, network layer, transport layer and application layer. So there are various protocols which comes under these layers. So one by one, we will see the IoT protocols. First, we'll see for the link layer protocols. Link layer protocols determine how the data is physically sent over the network's physical layer or medium. The scope of this link layer is the local network connection to which host is attached. Host on the same link exchange data packets over the link layer using link layer protocols. Link layer determines how the packets are coded and signaled by the hardware device over the medium to which the host is attached. So the first uh, protocol which is used in the link layer is 802.3 Ethernet. IEEE 802.3 is a collection of wired Ethernet standards for the link layer. These standards provide data rates from 10 Mbps to 40 Gb per second and higher, higher than that. The next is 802.11 Wi-Fi that is IEEE 802.11 is a collection of wireless local area network communication standards including extensive description of the link layer and the data rate uh, is uh, varying from 1 Mbps to 6.75 Gbps. So the next is 802.16. So this IEEE 802.16 is a collection of wireless broadband standards including extensive description of the link layer. So this particular um, standard provides the data rate from 1.5 Mbps to 1 Gbps. The next is 802.15.4 LRWPAN. This is um, personal area network and it's a collection of low rate wireless uh, personal area networks. Um, these standards provide data rates from 40 kbps to 150 kbps and the next one is the last is a 2g 3g or 4g that is mobile communication and there are some different generations of mobile communication standards which will have the second generation third generation or fourth generation now the five generations also into the market data rate for this standard range from 9.6 kbps or you can say the 2g to uh, up to 100 mbps so this is all about the link layer protocols now we'll go for the network or you can also call it as a internet layer protocols so this particular layer is responsible for sending ip datagrams from the source network to the destination network a network layer performs the host addressing and a packet routing here we use ipv4 and ipv6 for identification and ipv4 and ipv6 are hierarchical uh, ip addressing scheme so um, we'll see for ipv4 this is a internet protocol as a numerical label assigned to each device connected to a computer network uh, that uses internet protocol for communication an ip address serves two main functions host or network interface identification and location addressing ipv4 defines an ip address as a 32-bit number and that's why uh, the, because of the growth of internet and the depletion of available IPv4 addresses, a new version of IPv6 that is using 128 bits for the IP address was standardized in 1998. So we'll go for the IPv6. This is nothing but the successor of IPv4. This is internet protocol version 6. So it was developed by the Internet Engineering Task Force to deal with the long anticipated problem of IPv4 address exhaustion. Um, so IPv6 uses 128-bit address, theoretically allowing to rest to 128 or approximately to 3.4 into 10 rest to 38 addresses. And the last uh, internet layer protocol or the network protocol is 6 low pan that is the acronym for ipv6 or low power wireless personal area network so is is the, the particular name this low uh, 6 low pan is the name of the concluded working group of the internet area 
that is internet engineering task force this protocol allows the small devices with a limited processing ability to transmit information wirelessly using an internet protocol so this is about the internet layer protocol so the next one is the transport layers here two protocols are used the first is a tcp and the second is udp tcp transition control protocol this is a standard that defines how to establish and maintain a network conversation through which application programs can exchange data tcp works with the internet protocol which defines how computers send packets of data to each other together tcp and ip are the basic rules for defining the internet so the next is a udp this is user datagram protocol it's a transport layer protocol obviously and it is a part of internet protocol suite it refers as udp ip suite unlike tcp that is unreliable and connectionless protocol so there is no need to establish connection prior to data transfer so this is all about a transport layer and the next the last layer is the application layer here you have lots of app, um, protocols uh, first one is the http uh, application layer protocols define how the application interface with the lower layer protocols to send over the network so http hypertext transfer protocol is an application layer protocol uh, for transmitting hypermedia documents such as html it was designed for communication between web browsers and web servers but it can also be used for other purposes um, http follows a classical client server model with a client opening a connection to make a request then waiting until it receives a response http is a stateless protocol meaning that the server does not keep any data or the state between two requests this is all about http the next is coap that is constant application protocol is a specialized internet application protocol which is defined in rfc 7252 it enables devices to communicate over the network and this is particularly targeted for constraint hardware such as 8-bit microcontrollers low power sensors and similar devices that can run on http or tls web socket this is enables a two-way communication between client running untrusted code in a controlled environment to remote host that has opted in to uh, communication from that code MQTT is, is a machine to machine connectivity protocol and it was designed as an extremely lightweight or publish subscribe messaging transport and useful for connections with the remote locations where a small code footprint is required the next xmpp extensible messaging and presence protocol is a communication protocol for message oriented middleware based on xml it elements the near real time uh, exchange of structure at extensible data between any two or more entities DDS is a data distribution service is a middleware protocol and API standard for data centric connectivity from the object management group and it integrates uh, the components of system together providing a low latency data connectivity extreme reliability and scalable architecture that business and the mission critical internet of things applications needed amqp is the last protocol under the application layer and it consists of a hard and fast components that route and same messages within a broker carrier with a set of policies for wiring the components together this protocol enables patron programs to talk to the deal running it with the mqp model so this is all about the iot protocols thank you